Hello everyone, welcome. This is Jeff Ream. I wanna thank you for joining me today and I do apologize we had a little bit of a technical issue if you're watching on the original YouTube link, you're probably not because it's not streaming there. I've updated that so hopefully you get over here with us right away and I will have that straightened away for our next episode. However, for today, um, we're gonna be doing 15 minute tech tools and what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna quickly introduce myself and also show you my distance setup and kind of how I function from working at home. And then I'm gonna show you some pretty neat tips and tricks um, about Google Forms. Google Forms are super powerful and they'll be extra important now. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to take a second um, and be able to introduce myself. My name is Jeff and I work at North Tahoe High School. I'm a high school counselor. Um, this is my eighth year doing that. Um, some people might know me better as the Counseling Geek. That's kind of my pseudo uh, personality online. And I really have a lot of fun learning about new technology, learning new tools. And so I'm happy to be able to share some of those things with you. The premise behind today's um, webinar and the upcoming webinars that I'll do um, is like some people had responded to me, no one has an hour to sit around and, and maybe get information in. So I'm hoping to, to emulate this by doing 15 minute bite-sized episodes. Um, this episode might go slightly longer simply because I'm doing a little bit of the introductory an introduction here, but for future episodes, I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and when we're done with 15 minutes, we're gonna be done. All right, so to get us started though, I wanna kind of quickly give you an idea of how I actually run my, um, my distance learning. And a couple things, I'm gonna pick up this webcam so hopefully you don't get all seasick on me, but I'm gonna show you kind of, this is my little extra room, and I've set up a little digital office. And one of the biggest things that's actually helped in this, and it's probably a perfect purchase for me, um, is I'm gonna show you this right now. But is this little, I can pretend like I'm a recording artist, and this is something called a condenser microphone. It looks fancy and it looks expensive. It was $30 on eBay. It showed up like three days after I ordered it, okay? And you don't need anything fancy, okay? But it, it really does help be able to make your interactions with families and students. It's also how I'm able to make a little bit more professional quality recordings and videos. Um, audio makes a big difference. I do have little remote earbuds that I have Bluetooth that I use when I'm working on meetings. Um, and then I also, if you didn't see, I have two computers. So here's kind of my matrix computer and then my laptop, which is oftentimes up here. My router is right next to me as well so that I have optimum speed. All right, so that's kind of my, my digital piece. I brought my chair home from my office and then I also have a Bluetooth or wireless keyboard and mouse. All right, so that's, that's how I actually function at home and um, I wanna just take a second and just show you that one big important thing is just, you know, if you do buy these things, they can go anywhere in price and it, it, it can be a lot. So just be wary. Um, you don't need to spend a lot for what our purposes are. Um, this $30 microphone is probably actually more than I actually need to be um, at the quality that I'm hoping to be at. And so if you to buy these, make sure that you buy a USB version of those. Um, there's different mics that you can buy. Um, I also have a webcam that's removable from my laptop. Um, and that is a uh, Logitech, I think it's a C920 is the actual model. All right, so let's get into the actual tutorial today. So I'm gonna jump over here, pray that my audio still works. If it's not, please give me a little heads up. Okay, and today what we're gonna be talking about is Google Forms. All right, so Google Forms, like I said, very uh, awesome tool. And I went ahead and I saved us a little bit of time today by creating information here. And so I've already created a, a temporary a, a, a introductory form, and I've also created an outline. An outline is important uh, for a couple different reasons. An outline actually helps us be effective with our form. We, when we're using it at the level that I'm gonna teach you how to do real quickly, um, you wanna kinda think a few steps ahead. If you start building it, you might find yourself getting stuck. So you wanna kinda create a little bit of a layout, kinda like I've done here. This is just the very beginning of the layout but it gives you an idea of what we're talking about. One thing that I'm gonna highlight is, I always suggest, and this actually came from our students, is always tell students why they are gonna be needing to complete a form. Talk to students about what they're doing, because when 
you know, when they're filling this out, they're going to be giving us 30 seconds, five minutes of their time, and we want to make sure it's valuable to them. So I always actually put the why in the description. All right, so this is just the first tip that I would suggest is creating a little outline for any forms that are probably going to be used frequently or are going to have very valuable information you're going to try to collect so it's done um, effectively. So let's talk about a few cool tips. Here's the little demo form that I created for you. And there's a couple different areas that I want to kind of highlight. The first one actually helps our form become more effective. If you're like me, you work, work with a lot of different grade levels. You work with students who um, will have a lot of different uh, information and we might want to send out one form to a lot of people or a lot of students, but collect some specific information that might differ based on their demographic, their grade level, if they're a parent or a student. And, and Google Form actually can do that. You don't need to create separate forms. Um, the way that you do this is actually by using sections. And as you saw back here, I actually kind of broke things down into sections. And I'll show you how to do that. I've made a little bit. So here's kind of the top of it. I have a basic demographic area. So what is your name? What is your grade level? Okay, and then I've created sections. It's really easy to make a section. All you have to do is over here on this right-hand menu, you're gonna click this last little box. It looks like two hamburger buns. All right, if you click that, what that's gonna do somewhere in my form, it doesn't always put it in the most logical place right here. It's going to create a new section. And if you think of a new section, it's basically like adding a page. All right, so when you're doing a form, if you click next and then you go and continue on to that, um, that's basically gonna be um, the next page or next section. All right, so it kind of breaks up your form in the first place. The other cool thing that you can do, so I'm gonna delete this section because I don't actually want it right now. So you can delete it here. Actually, no, because that's going to leave the whole thing. We'll leave it. Um, and so I've already created a couple for 10th grade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to add, come down here. I'm going to add a new section at the bottom. And to move them, you hit the little three dots. You hit move section. And it's going to have a drag and droppable place here. So what you can do is I'm going to create one for 9th grade just to demonstrate how that works. You'll drop it up here in the logical space. You're going to title it 9th grade or anything you'd like, okay? And some questions, so some areas might have the same question, all right? So you might say, I might wanna ask this question to every single student, no matter what grade they're in. All you gotta do to save you some time is this little duplicate button. Drag that question right up here. So let's go get in there, there we go. And now it's part of that ninth grade page. All right, but say for example, we wanna ask, you know, ninth graders are very different than 12th graders. Maybe we wanna ask some different questions. The nice thing about what we can do, there's a tool in here by using this pages. If we click on this grade level, say we wanna delineate by grade level, what we can do is under here, so what I did, click on the little three dot menu, underneath the question you wanna use, and select go to section based on answer. What that does is it's gonna give little things here. You can do that all at the bottom of each page too. And I'll get to that. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click ninth grade is going to go to the ninth grade section, 10th grade is to the 10th grade section, and so on and so forth. And what that does for us is when students get to this question, when they select ninth grade, they're not going to go to the 10th grade page. They're gonna go only to the ninth grade. And, and same thing, the 10th graders will not have to go onto this if you don't do that, they're gonna to go to ninth grade, then they're gonna to go to 10th grade, and so on. By doing this, they're gonna to skip to the most meaningful page, and this part's actually pretty important. When you create a new section, if you do like I did and added a ninth grade section, it's going to default, if you can see what I'm highlighting here, after section three, after every section, it's gonna have this except for the last section. If you add something new, you have to make sure that you change after section three. I don't want them going on to section 10 or the 10th grade, section four here. I want to actually have them go to section seven, the final dem demographic page. What that's gonna do is when they answer these questions, it's gonna skip these pages right here and actually take them down here to this last question. All right, which I wanna ask everybody. Okay, so this is useful if you have very specific questions for each grade level. Um, there's a couple other cool things that you can do, okay? So if I wanted to say, I, up here I said, please select your top three topics, okay? These are check boxes, meaning that they can select any of these boxes. So there's actually another cool tool within Google Forms that if you clicked on the question to edit, 
and you come down here again, it's called response validation. Response validation basically says you have these options to select at least, select at most. So if we wanted to say select at least two, okay, they can you can do that. You hit two, and then if they say you know please pick two, and it will not let them pass that without picking two. For our purposes, I want to select three. So I want to say select exactly three. Please pick three. And when they get there, if they only pick two, they're not going to be able to move on until they pick three. Okay, and you can do that. There's different forms. The different types of entry will have different options. For example, here on the name, response validation will look different. It might say number, text, length, if you want to have people write certain things. Okay, so there's a lot of cool stuff that you can get very specific. It can be a little scary, but it's actually a very powerful tool. Um, another great option that you can do is actually adding pictures to your questions. So another example here is over here when you're clicking to edit, if I wanted to say, uh, I'll create a new one because I want to try it and show you. So I, I just did a Maslow's hierarchy of need uh, question. Uh, for my own students. And I, I, instead of asking them specifics, I put pictures. And so let me just show you real quickly. If I said like level one, I can actually tie a picture to that. And I'm going to upload it. I'll find my pictures. And then we'll say the top level of Maslow. And what that does is when they pick that option, and you don't even have to type anything, I would highly suggest typing something because it, you're not going to be able to get your results with pictures. You're going to have text. So you want to make sure you call it something that you will recognize if, you, if it's numbers, if it's just top level or self-fulfillment, something like that. Okay. Um, another thing that's really nice to do to help make your forms look better is you can actually create images. So images can be included. So if I wanted to, you know, on my Maslow's hierarchy of need, I included the whole hierarchy so students can see the whole pyramid when they're making a decision. Um, you can also create little section headers that make your, uh, form really pop out. It makes it look a little more visually appealing. Okay. This was made on Canva. And in a second, I'm going to, you know, we're going to have another one of these sessions and I'm going to be talking about Canva. So I can actually show you how to make one of these um, or many other great tools. But this is going to be something that I just made in about 30 seconds using a template that makes this section pop out. So like what is important to you? Your school counselor wants to know. Okay. It just made, it looks better than this. Okay, so words aren't catchy, images are. Um, another thing that we can do um, is, say for example, if you're doing a needs assessment or if you are making, say for example, a, um, an appointment request system, being on a digital tool, maybe later on in the series we'll talk about how to manage digital appointments, but um, you might be doing a Google form as a digital appointment. You need to be able to turn on response receipts. Okay, and so in order to do that, um, you're going to actually uh, head up here to the settings, uh, I gotta remember where I put those. Uh, it's up here. So you're gonna get an email notification for new responses. You have to go to the responses tab and then the three dot menu, get email notification for new responses. And what that does is that's gonna tell me when anybody submits something. Sometimes I put out a form that I just like to see that people are filling it out. It makes me feel good. It's kind of like getting a package in the mail. Um, and it's helpful. If you're going to be getting a lot of responses, be wary because that can definitely overload your inbox with a lot of bloat. Okay, so you want to be careful on what forms you're using this, but um, it's helpful when you have to actually act on maybe the form um, and the response. So, so that's a great way to actually make sure that you are being notified of all these different things. Okay. The other last piece that I want to mention, and I'm not going to be able to show this to you because I don't have any data in here yet. Um, but there's a couple add-ons that are real nice. Add-ons are kind of like extensions for your browser. Um, and the one that's really neat um, is if you have a lot of data and you want to kind of like almost do pivot table type work um, with your data and kind of really disaggregate it, there's a really awesome extension called Advanced Summary by Awesome Table. That is a, uh, an a awesome extension that I would encourage you to explore. This one's a little bit more advanced, so you might want to play with it before you uh, really depend on it to make sure you understand how it works. But that's something that I really want to make sure that you uh, took a second to get through. Looks like about our 15 minutes are just about up, um, and I want to honor your time and honor my time. I hear my three and a half year old yelling outside of my room. Working at home is fun, isn't it? And so I just want to make sure that you guys know about our upcoming, uh, our next one. I've actually booked it already. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. And so basically, 
Um, what that's going to be doing is for our episode two, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about Canva. Canva without it's like Canvas without an S. It's a great tool that that a lot of industries use uh, that makes you look like a pretty awesome uh, digital designer. You don't need many skills. There's a lot of great templates, and it's literally drag and drop. But I'm going to show you what that looks like and how we can actually use that as a school counselor. That's going to be this week on Thursday, April 9th at 3 p.m. All right, so we'll be doing it the same place. And I figured out a few of the issues with the technology, I believe. So um, the link should work if you had any issues. Like I said, I apologize in advance. But we're going to be coming back. And I'm going to do these until I run out of stuff that I want to share. So if you enjoy them, hopefully you do. And share them with your friends and let me know um, what you liked or what I could do better. Um, if you don't like them, 15 minutes are, are, can be used elsewhere. So grab some ice cream, grab some coffee. Uh, but I hope that you enjoyed, and I hope that we see you guys uh, again on Thursday, April 9th at 3 p.m. right here on Facebook and on YouTube. So thanks for popping in. If you guys have any additional things that you'd like to add um, in terms of how you use Google Forms, please leave them in the comments below. This video will be available as a recording, both on Facebook and YouTube for anyone that wasn't able to make it. Um, and if you want to come back and revisit anything, Always, always, always use YouTube to look up other great tools and resources. And I want to just thank you for being a great, great colleague and a great, great friend. Thank you.